won the vacant NABF waterweight belt with a third round TKO over prospect Jermaine Sanders last June. In his last fight, successfully defended his crown with an impressive eighth round stoppage of tough veteran Pat Coleman. And now perhaps best known for his all-out war with Ben Tacky, a fifth-round TKO loss, January 2002. Similar to Ortiz, has not sidestepped the stiff competition, but what about the age factor? You know, he says he's a young 32, and he may be with only 14 amateur fights and 27 pro fights. It's not like he's been through the mill. And he says physically he can do things now he couldn't do before. He actually bench-pressed 300 pounds recently. That's 299 more than me. Yes, but you do that one pound with conviction. And he also is averaging less or, uh, less than five minutes per mile in his running. So he says he's a young 32, and he thinks there's a few years left in his body. And now you remember Juan Carlos Rubio, who upset uh, Bajado. Reed stopped Rubio in two, three years ago on five days' notice, an overpowering performance, which included three knockdowns. All right, we're ready to size him up. As we check out the tail of the tape at age 32 Reed is three years older than Ortiz and while the 5'11 Reed has the two inch height advantage Ortiz's arms are slightly longer at yesterday's way and Reed made 147 on his third try so a struggle with weight Ortiz just under and the unified rules the key ones no standing eight no three knockdown a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth, the fight's ruled a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they will go to the cards. So here at the arena in Miami, Florida, getting ready for Teddy Reed versus Elio Ortiz for the NABF welterweight crown. We're set for the introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans, at this time, we present a championship attraction coming your way. It is once again brought to you by Arthur Palulo's Banner Promotions and Showtime, as sponsored by WallStreet.com, Sportsbook, CrystalPalace.com, and Perfect10.com. This bout coming your way is sanctioned by the Florida State Athletic Commission, along with the NABF, and the supervisor in attendance is Sam Macias. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Bernard Bruni, from Bradenton, Florida, Alex Levine, and from Boca Raton, Florida, Mark Streisand. And our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of the action, introducing Bill Connors. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the NABF Welterweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my right, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with yellow trim, and hailing from Coro, Venezuela, now fighting out of Miami, Florida. He weighed in at 146 and one half pounds. His record stands at 24 wins, five losses, one no contest, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Rank the number six NABF welterweight contender. Please welcome the challenger, Elio Ortiz. And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with blue trim, hailing from Adelphi. Maryland. He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds. His record stands at 21 wins, five losses, one draw, with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the defending NABF welterweight champion, introducing Teddy Tugan Reed. Let's go, champ. Once again, Bill Connors is our referee in charge. Now to give instructions, 12 round scheduled bout. All right, you're both giving your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to listen to my commands at all times. Y ahora recibe sus instrucciones atrás. Yo quiero siempre escúchame. Protégese siempre. Always protect yourself. Okay, your trunks are fine up here. Any questions over here? Any questions over here? Preguntas? I forgot this? No. Toca las manos. Good luck. The bilingual Bill Connors doing a nice job. Now on paper has the look of a, a good competitive fight, both with quality opposition, two gutty guys, both very confident, almost mirror image numbers. 
Ortiz, 29 fights, 5 losses, 18 knockouts. Reed, 27 fights, 5 losses, 15 knockouts. Reed with 5 first-round knockouts. Ortiz with 4. Reed may be the busier of the two. Ortiz the stronger. And a lot of folks wouldn't be surprised if Ortiz pulls this out. Well, they're, they're very evenly matched. And, you know, they both jumped up from uh, junior welterweight. Uh, and uh, for Teddy Reed, this is his fifth fight at 147. He hasn't lost at this weight. Uh, and one of his wins, as you pointed out, was over Juan Rubio, the man that uh, defeated Otto. Wow! Oh, out of nowhere, down goes Ortiz. Less than 30 oh, seconds cinco, in. Seis, siete, that shot, it really sí, is. Getting us? Teddy Reed dropping Elio Ortiz about 28 seconds into the fight. Ortiz down for the third time in his career. He went down against Mitchell, dropped 15 seconds into that Whoa. fight. Her clean. Dropped against Ricardo Mayorga. Two losses. We'll see what uh, transpires from this point on. And now Ortiz being very cautious. Another big right hand by Reed. Reed's looking to finish this one early. Ortiz was able to come back against Mitchell. Mayorga didn't get him until the 10th round. But Reed is landing some very significant punches. And there's a ways to go in this first round. Reed just chasing Ortiz all over the place. So much for the evenly matched fight to this point. Boy. Teddy Reed is throwing bomb after bomb. Now they want Reed to set things up with the jab. He's doing it. Even just as a table setting device. Reed just wailing away. Throwing haymakers at Ortiz. Ortiz is trying to cover a left right combination to the chin. By Break. Teddy Reed. Very Break. impressive this one. Go wrestling. Break. Step wrestling. Ortiz probably wondering what has gotten into this guy. There's no question Reed has power. Uh, we know that. But uh, for him to be dominating Ortiz early in this fight, pretty interesting. Well, Reed does like to attack from the opening bell. And certainly living up to that building. And does look to finish Break. opponents early. Break. He does have good power. He's a busy puncher, as you showed in the tacky fight. Tremendous work, Ray. Let's see if Ortiz can weather oh, this no, scene. Brick clean. Oh, what a right hand upstairs by a Reed, and Ortiz drags him down. Oh. That's a knockdown. And the bell sounds two knockdowns for Reed, a 10-8 round. There's no three knockdown rule in case you were wondering. <laughs> He's standing. He's standing. He's standing there. Look at me. Look at me. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I'm okay. Don't stand up. The power of Teddy Reed, very evident here in round one. Now, that really didn't land that well, but I think it got him on the side of the head and affected his equilibrium. And I think he also slipped. But it, but it did have an impact. And then in the second knockdown, of course, we will see a huge right hand right on the button. And then, really, Reed is dragged down by Ortiz. Yeah, that first one looked like more of a balance shot around 24 seconds into the round. And then at 250 into round one, Ortiz goes down again. Two right hands. The first one more of the grazing variety. The second one, very, very solid. It really connected. Now, a point to be made is that against Ben Tacky, Reed got more aggressive than they wanted him to be and suffered for it. The same could happen here, although he's landing huge shots against Ortiz. And now, Reed looking to end it in round no, no, no. two. Clean. Yeah, Reed told us that that became a volume fight because Tacky got mean. And down 
goes Ortiz for the third time within two rounds. That was partial push, but still it was a punch. Seis, siete, ocho. Donde estamos? Okay. He got up quickly, and he's got two minutes to survive. Will he? And Reed comes right back with a hard combination, a left hand by Ortiz, showing some guts. Stop! Stop! He's getting a breather here. You have to wonder how much longer this thing's going to last. Teddy Reed yeah. said that 147 was a great weight for him. He's never lost at this weight. And boy, he's indicating that he's right. <laughs> Reed goes right back to work. Ortiz now being aggressive, and that's going to be the only thing that will keep him in this fight. He's going to have to do something offensively to keep Reed at bay. Reed just going for the bomb, looking to end it on one punch. Teddy Reed's getting away with some of the wide punching that they don't didn't want him to do, but he's landing so effectively and from such long range that Ortiz is not able to count it. Good work on the inside by Ortiz. Ortiz getting his bearings all of a sudden and coming forward and digging in to the body of Reed, pushing him back. Reed looking to cover up. And now upstairs, Ortiz, as the crowd gets behind him. Ortiz bouncing back now. And it was Teddy Reed holding on a moment ago. Still holding on. So suddenly, a shift in the momentum. Ortiz continues to score. Oh, what a dramatic turnaround. Final seconds of round two. After it's been all Reed, having Ortiz down three times, Reed wobbled momentarily. Great left hook by Ortiz, and that right shook Teddy Reed. An overhand right by Ortiz that connected. What a turnaround of Man, Reed just loading up and missing. Oh, this has gotten interesting all of a sudden. Get this boy, rinse the mouthpiece off for me. Tell him stay back, this boy can't hit you. Punch back. Sick it in deep. You okay, man? Mm -hmm. Don't let him get momentum, uh, Teddy. All right. Come on, put these shots together. Look for your uppercut. Don't let him get momentum, Teddy. Punch yeah. back. Yeah. The same time you punch and punch, when you get your good, this kind of hook. Don't let this sucker do this, man. Come on, breathe, breathe. Shut your mouth down. Teddy Reed, very powerful, especially early in that round. And there is the knockdown, which actually was partially a push. But here comes Ortiz, working on the inside. This all started with great body work, and then Ortiz was able to go up top, and Teddy Reed holding on for dear life toward the end of that round. After that first round by Teddy Reed, would you have thought Adrian Davis would be yelling and screaming at Reed after the second? And there was so much admonishing between rounds, I don't think Reed got any water. Well, as I mentioned early in that second round, it was starting to look like Teddy Reed was getting overly aggressive, and that's exactly what happened, and Ortiz was able to take advantage of it. Look at the combo by Ortiz. Now we're seeing who Elio Ortiz really is, but he was so hurt early in this fight, Steve, that he couldn't really produce that kind of offense. Former Venezuelan junior welterweight champion, former world title challenger, nine-year veteran, very experienced, able to hang tough after that assault, that early barrage by Teddy. Big right hand. Oh, he's in trouble. Ortiz, another right. He's lost the ball. Shootout. This is tacky Reed all over again. The referee, Bill Cotter, picks up the mouthpiece, waits for a, a, a break in the action so he can replace it for Ortiz. 
a hammering right dismantling the mouthpiece. Well, it looked like Ortiz was ready to go again. He was rocked and dazed. Being punished by Teddy Reed. Oh, a heavy right hand. What's keeping Ortiz up? Reed is keeping his distance for the most part, using his two-inch height advantage and his reach advantage very effectively in this round. 5'11", Teddy Reed versus 5'9", Elio Ortiz. Ortiz not used to looking up at his opponents. And he's been looking up from the canvas throughout most of this fight. Those are usually the signs. Wide shots by Reed. And he 
Adrian Davis cannot like that. Very careless, opening himself up. Hey, this is a tough round to score. Even though Teddy Reed has come on very strongly, the referee, up until now, unaware that Ortiz had lost the mouthpiece for a third time. And having a hard time finding it as well. Boy, Bill Connors with his work cut out here. Round four continues. Back comes Teddy Reed with an overhand right. Missing with that right hand. Giving Ortiz an opportunity to counter. Another right hand that tagged Ortiz upstairs. That one got to him. And here comes Reed again. Reed sputtering Ortiz. Ortiz is down once again. The fourth time. Cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Está bien? ¿Dónde estamos? He only has five seconds. Will he make it? With about two seconds to go, it ends. And Teddy Ray dances around the ring in victory. And you know, Elio Ortiz not complaining too loudly. After the punishment that he sustained, you can't blame him. Did you ever think, though, a fighter would have been knocked down five times in this span of time, and you'd still think he was in the fight, and Ortiz was in the fight, really, until the last maybe 45 seconds. It's really an incredible notion, but you're right. And the ringside officials quickly to the scene to make sure Ortiz is all right. And Teddy Reed, with some anxious moments, emerges victorious. They, a wild fight. They did not want this to be as much of a shootout as uh, as it turned out to be. Pepe Correa, who's involved with him, we were in dinner the other night. He sat with us. He said, we so much want Teddy Reed to use his length and his jab and, uh, and, and win this fight from the outside. It didn't happen that way, but he did win. The crowd not happy. They think Ortiz should have been allowed to continue. He can make that case because there are only seconds remaining. But Ortiz didn't complain too much. And that look on Ortiz, I think, was disappointment as much as anything. So 32-year-old Teddy Reed holding on to his belt in a tremendous fight. It's over. Yeah, that's the morning. We look back at the point at which Teddy Reed started the downfall of Elio Ortiz. Ortiz still landing, as you can see, in this last round of the fight. Landing good uppercuts, but the right hand of Reed, which had been such a valuable weapon, staggering him. And from there, that point on, Reed was very, very aggressive and very, very active. Now, that right came from, I think, Dade County, somewhere else in Dade County, and, but it landed amazingly. And Teddy Reed just continued to go about his business. Ortiz tried to punch back at a certain point, tried to counter, but just literally couldn't. Reed's power was too much. And Teddy Reed remains undefeated at 147, and he did it with this kind of power. And this is the last knockdown of the fight. Reed just pummeling Ortiz, going to the body as well, showing a diversified attack there, more so than you might have thought. There goes Ortiz. He was very, very wobbly. The referee, Bill Connors, lets him up, and here is where it is finally ended. That right hand sends him down, and Ortiz is waved off, and he is more resigned than anything else. Maybe a little distressed, but he feels that uh, now twice in the last round, of course, five total knockdowns of Ortiz during the course of this fight. Unpopular to the fans because it happened so late in the round. They wanted it to continue because they were excited about the, the war that was uh, going on here from, from the opening bell. So Teddy Reed scores the victory, including five knockdowns. Ups his record to 22 and five with 16 knockdowns. The official announcement from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Two minutes, 58 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Bill Connors, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout and still NABF welterweight champion, Teddy Tucson Reed. A shootout in Miami, Teddy Reed with
with a pivotal stepping stone win in terms of world title contention. He told us he'd love a shot at Ricardo Mayorga or Corey Spinks or Antonio Margarito or even he mentioned Fernando Vargas at 154, Al. Yeah, he said he would move up to 154 and the way he punches, of course, uh, you can make a case for it. So a very a dramatic fight. Eddie Reed with the upper hand early.